welcome to Three Growlers, a show for craft beer drinkers like you, by craft beer drinkers like you. Brought to you by Beer Pluma. Check us out at our website, beerpluma.com, for more information. Well, thank you, Chris, and uh, welcome, Jason, and uh, welcome to Episode 4 of Season 2 of Three Growlers. And uh, here we are again, back in the garage. Um, again, it's a, still a really chilly April day. Uh, we just had a couple inches of snow yesterday, so... Um, I think I can see your brother, Will. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Let's grab some beers and we'll take care of that real quick. Okay, um, we are going to skip over upcoming events. And uh, so we just wanted to go reach out to you guys, uh, our, our, our watchers, our viewers, um, and let you guys know that we are looking for any kind of feedback. This is a craft beer show for you guys. And so we want your feedback, whether you like the show or you have suggestions for how to make it better or beers that you want to see or breweries that we should focus on. We want to hear from you. We want to hear it. So you can leave a comment on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google Plus, if that's your thing. Uh, we definitely got it. We've also got an email address. Uh, you can uh, email us at info at beerpluma.com. So, but uh, reach out to us or at least click that like button. And let us know that you're listening. So, I mean, we're putting on this show for you guys. So let us know that you're out there. So, without further ado, let's get into the beers. What do we have up first, Will? Well, before we get into what's first, let's talk about what we are going to be drinking today. All right. Um, this is the 30th anniversary of, of Shell's Pilsner. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, Shell's has been brewing a German-style Pilsner uh, for 30 years now. And it is the closest thing I have ever found here in the U.S. to a German Pilsner that I've had over in Germany. I mean, it is almost dead spot on. Um, and Pilsners, as you guys know, are one of my favorite beer styles. Well, for their 30th anniversary, they had this great idea of brewing four different types of Pilsners. We have their 1984, which was their original recipe. We have their 2014, which is their current recipe. We have a Rogan Pilsner. Uh, which we'll go over in a little bit. And then they've also got an experimental, uh, and I don't know how to pronounce this, I'm probably butchering it, but it's a mandarina, which uses an experimental type of hops. So we've got three, or we got four different Pilsners that we get to taste back to back and see what the difference is between them. So that's what we're going to be doing on this show today. So today is all about uh, happy 30th anniversary shells uh, to your Pilsner. Yeah. So again, it's one of my favorite beers out there. So without further ado... Well, I have to ask, you know, I'm not as knowledgeable about beer as you guys, what makes a Pilsner a Pilsner? You know, that's actually a great question. Um, Pilsners actually origin originated in a small, um, it was a German community within the Czech Republic. Uh, called, it was a little town called Pilz. P-L-Z-E-N with some funny stuff over the letters. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll put it right down here at the bottom of the screen. The exact, uh, so it was this little town in the Czech Republic that was really known for its soft water. So that's one of your first key indicators of a good Pilsner, is that it uses a soft water. And they brewed, and lagering was just starting to come into fruition. What lagering is, is that's when you cold ferment a beer. It uses a bottom fermenting yeast, where ales use a top fermenting yeast, and, and then it was cold stored for like somewhere between six to eight weeks. So number one, these beers took a lot longer to make, so there was a lot more patience behind them. But number two, because of refrigeration, capabilities that were now coming out in the 1800s, you were able to produce them all year round. And so beer started gradually moving away from the heavier ales to these lighter, crisper lagers. And in this town of Pils, they came up with a this beer that was flavored with Saz hops, which gives it this good skunky flavor. Now, we talked about this a couple episodes ago, yeah. not a skunked beer, but a <laughs> skunky flavor to it um, that, that gives it its distinct characteristic sauce hops flavor. So that's, that's, those are a couple of the things that you're looking for. It should be really light, very clear. Should taste really good, super cold. Uses sauce hops for the, for the majority of the flavoring. And, um, and it's, it's obviously a lager beer, so. Okay. Okay. I don't think we'll have any problem with it being super cold. <laughs> Chris, you want to reach down into that brubicle down there and grab the 1984? All right. Love to. Okay, everybody, this is the Brubicle. This is a store, a beer storage device uh, by Brubicle, and it allows you to uh, store your beers if you don't have a traditional basement or cellar. completely blocks out the light and has a lot of great features, including a modular shelf inside. For more about this beer storage system, go to brubicle.com. I 
mean, just looking at this compared to the last beers we were doing in the last episode, I mean, you can almost see through the bottle. Yeah. I mean, that's like super clear. So that this is their 1984, which is their original one, which is made with a six-row barley, uses Cascade hops for uh, bittering, and uses Hellertau and Middlefru for aromas. Now, whoa, pump the brake. What? Walk us through what we would expect to taste based on what you just described. You should get that skunky flavor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it, it's actually uh, the pilsner. Actually, is it just because the reason I say stop? It's it, it just sounds like you read off a witch's brew over there. No, uh, it's a six row barley, so that means it's a barley. It's a the the stock of wheat has has six rows instead of the usual two. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's a six row barley, and I don't know which type of six row barley. There's like hundreds of them out there, and then it uses uh, three different types of hops. And since I have the list, I'm going to put it out there because I know a lot of people ask for, for us to get more into the ingredients. Maybe you and I know that pressure up there too, six row barley. And <laughs> I know that, that's a good idea. That and I know that the Heller Tau, the Heller Tower is one of the noble hops, which is what you find in a lot of German craft beers. One of the noble hops. Like royalty. Yes. Nice. So let's, let's pour this one out. Let's see what we got. I'm anxious because I don't like peasant hops no. sullying my beer. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm noticing this is very light in color. Yeah, and that, that's exactly what a Pilsner should be. I mean, if you're looking for a traditional style Pilsner, and look at how it's got the big, foam, foamy German head to it. I mean, this is exactly what a Pilsner should look like. So this is a 5.2. Um, this is a 5.2. Let's... 5.2? Definitely the, you're getting that white, white yeah. grape okay, yeah. out of this one. Crisp, sharp fruitiness almost. Yeah, it's very clear. It's getting that skunky hop yep. flavor that I'm talking about. Right away. Yeah, so. But it also has a real kind of a, almost a dry, nutty finish to it. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we've said skunky a little bit. Now, I want to emphasize that I'm not getting a very strong, you know, that pungent flavor out of this. It is actually quite light. No, it is. But, yeah. I mean, the, the, I, I just don't know how else to describe Saw's hops to people. Or, or that Pilsner hops to, to, to people without saying that it's kind of got a, a skunky bitterness to it. So in the craft beer world, I mean, skunky isn't negative. Well, it is if the beer is skunked. Yeah. In this case, skunked means... means I, it, skunky is not warm. something a normal... Skunky is something that a, a normal person like us here at this table would use to describe the beer. Mm -hmm. It's not something necessarily that they would use at like a, a, a beer festival or a, a, in a judging <coughs> tournament. I'll take a stab at it. I, I think this has kind of like a bready, almost yeast type flavor to it. Uh, because it isn't quite skunky, but it does have like a, a flavor like you would get out of a very like white bread. I'm getting that out of the end notes, but not out of the hop notes. I mean, the hop notes is definitely, for me, a clear skunky presence, a, a Saw's hops presence. Okay, so maybe I was describing the after. Or after well, I, you can describe it however you want to describe it. It's, your, it's a free world here. Is that your street name? Well, yeah. I mean, it's sharp carbonation. You should get a good sharp carbonation out of a, out of a lager. That's just, that, that's one of the distinct, everybody asks me, so what's the difference between a nail and a lager? And really, they're, everybody thinks, well, ales are dark and lagers are light. And that's not actually true, uh, true because you've got cream ales on one end and you've got black lagers on the other end. Um, or in Dunkel beers. And, I mean, the, the coloration has nothing to do with it. What you should find more in an ale is more fruity notes, but what you should find in uh, a lager is lighter tastes, not necessarily color, but a lighter taste and more carbonation. 2014. Yes. Let's bring it up. Okay, so uh, next, uh, Chris, we're going to reach in the room, go down there. We're going to pull out their 2014, which is their current uh, Pilsner. All right. There and uh, while you're pulling that, yeah, why don't you go ahead and show that. Uh, this, the ingredients in this one include a two-roll barley, uh, car uh, carapils, sterling, which are both used for bittering, aroma, and dry hopping. All, all four of these are summer beers? All, all, no, they're just pills. Okay. No, I hope they actually keep this around all year round. Yeah. I mean, well, the 2014 is a year-round beer. So this is what they, this is what they brew for their pills today. Okay. Okay, first off, um, from the aroma on it, I am definitely getting a much more mellowed out fl smell out of this one. It's re real mm. subtle. How, yeah, it's... I'm getting more of that skunkiness, though. Same color. 
I'm getting a little bit more of the skunkiness, but it's it's way less of an mm. aroma. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing less of it. Mm -hmm. Almost like they balanced it out more. Much cleaner taste. Mm -hmm. um, and definitely the hops are more forward in this, and there's a lot less multi flavors to it. See, now, where the other one reminded me more of a Veltines, this reminds me of another German Pilsner called Jever which is a really, it's known for its hoppiness. In fact, in Germany, they call it the herbal flavor. Herbal flavor. Herbal flavor. Not, has nothing to do with the puff puff pass herbs, but uh, they, they call that a more herbal flavor. I don't know what you mean. Yes, you do. I gave up. Anything else about the beer? I mean, I find this is a little cleaner in flavor. Yep. You know, more refined. Less malty. Uh, the malt biscuity notes are gone. Well, the gone. word that we're not saying now is skunky, and I would say that this doesn't have a lot of that skunkiness. No, it has the skunkiness. <laughs> I would just say that the skunkiness is more is more balanced. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair. But at the same time, I feel that they sacrificed the the maltiness to it. That that bready biscuity note that I was getting at the end of the the nineteen eighty four. Uh, so basically what a Rogan is, is the style of beer made with uh, rye. So it's an essentially the rye version of a Pilsner. And it's from a certain region, the Rogan region of uh, Germany. Um, so in this beer, we've got a two-roll barley and rye malt. It uses emerald hops for bittering and emerald and tatnard for aroma and dry hopping. So there's two types of barley that are basically six used and in. Two. It's two and six roll. And this one was six, right? Yep, that's the only one with six. All the rest of these will have two. And this is, again, this is a 5.2. Uh, so here we're on our third uh, Pilsner from the August Shell's 30th Anniversary Pilsner Pack, and this is their Rogan. So again, this is the one that's going to have some uh, some uh, rye malt added into that uh, to the barley malt. Uh, we're looking a little bit more like the uh, 1984 here on this one with the thicker head. This is a little cloudier. Yep. A little bit. That, that might also be our glass at this point, too. We might be starting to experience what they call chill haze. Chill haze? Chill haze. All right. So why do they call it a Rogan, Well, That's actually a really good question, Chris. The reason why they call it a Rogan is because it's um, in the, the region of Germany uh, of Rogan. They brewed more beers with, with rye before the Rheinheitsgebot came, came about. So this is a really old school version of, of beer before the German purity law for beer came out. So. Yeah, and the Reinheitsgebot, that's the German beer purity law that you were mentioning. That's correct. If you're not familiar with uh, the, the German purity law, Reinheitsgebot, it basically limited beer to, at the time, barley, uh, which was later extended to wheat, uh, hops, and water. And eventually when they discovered yeast and its role in beer, they put that one in there. But it wasn't allowed to have any other adjuncts added to it. So... Hey, isn't that one of the oldest laws on the book? It's not one of the oldest laws. I mean, we got the laws from Hammurabi well, way the, back in Mesopotamia, which are older laws. But it is the oldest food purity law that we know of. Okay. Nerd fact for you there. <laughs> <laughs> and all three of them, I don't, I don't get a strong aroma from any, all three so far. Like strong, like I would say the I would say the 1984 had the strongest aroma so far. This has the we, the least amount of aroma. I don't want to use the word weakest because that shows negative connotation, which that shouldn't be taken as badly. Yeah. This one definitely has the least amount of aroma to it. And it seems like they've again balanced and um, well balanced the skunky flavors because I'm not getting a, a lot of it that skunky bitterness. And this one is a lot sweeter and a lot heavier, and that's because of the rye. The rye is going to impart usually a sweeter, more more thicker mouthfeel to it yes. too. So, um, but other than that, I mean, it's it's personally I'm getting a little more af aftertaste than the other one. Yep, hmm. I, I do agree with you on that one. So it's got a it does have a little bit more of a lingering taste. Mm -hmm. Good call. Good call. Very very similar. Subtly. Yeah, yeah. I mean so this subtle. this one is just a slight sweetness <clears throat> difference. And uh, a little bit thicker mouthfeel, but other than that, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, mm -hmm. I mean, it's even got different hops in it too. I mean, that's rye, right? Well, the, well, this has rye malt in it, but for the hops, it's got it, this one uses emerald hops, and uh, tatnard, uh, tatnang hops, where uh, the other one was using uh, 
Carapels and Sterling. They both use dry hopping. Actually, oh. uh, and the last one uses dry hopping too. Right, what's next? Are we ready for the fourth beer here, guys? Ready. ready. Okay, oh, so our God. last beer is a little bit of an experiment by uh, Shells, and this is their, and I'm going to butcher this one, their Shells Mandarina. It's a 6.5 e, uh, ABV, and it uses two roll barley and Vienna malt, so we should see a little bit more of a red color out of it. It then uses Magnum hops for bittering, Mandarina Bavaria, for aroma and dry hopping. This is a new experimental type of hops. So, you want to do a little close-up of that one? I'll do a little close-up. All right. So, uh, <laughs> here, here we have the mandarina. This science bit. This is what's called parallax air. Oh. Nice. Nice. Good science bit. And they have nothing to say. They're like, okay. Well, explain to us about parallax. Parallax air is the air due to your point of view. Your perception. Your perception, yeah. So I'm getting actually the most aroma out of this one. At least I did at first, but now I'm not so much anymore. I'm wondering if my nose just acclimated real quick. For me, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not getting anything out of this. You know, I'm wondering if it, there was just like a... The, when you first poured it in the bottle, you actually have the most aroma. You should actually pick it up right after pouring it and smell it. But no, it's just something we don't have time for all the time here on the show. Because now the aroma's really died out for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not... Smelling anything. I'm definitely tasting something different. This reminds me more of a Bohemian Pilsner. Much sweeter. Much sweeter. I mean, now this one has the most distinctive taste. I would have been able to pull this one up out of this lineup. You know, so much time has passed since the first one. It's, it's really tough to tell. Mm -hmm. For me, this tastes, again, very Take similar. Take a sip. Take a sip out of the tasting glass. Take a sip. All right. All right. Even them out. <laughs> Rid of your parallax and you know, <laughs> you know, make a pill for that now. No, they don't. Will. You can find it by now. No. no. Not drink your mandarina. I do, yeah. This one was, this this one's one's way strong. sweeter. Yeah. Way sweeter. Thicker mouthfeel. Yeah. Yeah, this one it was very light. <clears throat> so going back to it, this one is much thicker, a little heavier, but that's in comparison for a very, very light beer. Yeah. So to say that this is heavy, we're talking, you know. Fine grades of heavy. For a Pilsner, this is heavy. For a Pilsner, only looking at a roll, end up putting all the Pilsners in the world in a row, this is going to be on the heavy end of the spectrum. Yes. To put it in, into context of anything else that you'd be drinking out there, so if you want to incorporate this type of beer into your, your palate or throw it into your cooler, we're talking very fine grains of, you know, or grades of, you know, thickness. If that's the appropriate word. Use. Sure, wait, we can take it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's ever so slightly more thick on the mouth, but not. Yeah, not. not I mean, not, we're not, not talking. I mean, I, this I is a, not a stout. Yeah, 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 not not by any stretch well, of the imagination. Again, you're talking to the guy where stouts are my pilsner, yeah. to to put it in your perspective. So, stouts for me are, are light. You know, you can have very light stouts. This reminds me more of what we call a bohemian pilsner. Uh, I don't know, I've never had a real Bohemian Pilsner, so I don't know if, if in uh, that area of the world if they, that's actually what the Pilsners taste like. But this, whenever we label something as a Bohemian Pilsner, this is usually the taste I get out of it. Okay. A little slightly heavier, a little slightly sweeter. Do you think Shells is trying to say it's a Bohemian? Um, no, I don't know if Shells is trying to say it because of the fact that they are very proud of the fact that they are a German heritage brewery. Um, so I don't know if that's the point they were trying to trying to make or there it doesn't say bohemian or no it obviously doesn't say it's bohemian pilsner it just reminds me of what we call what i have tasted before the closest thing i've ever tasted to this we've called it a bohemian pilsner before i mean but other than that i mean all the all the distinctive flavors are there i mean it definitely mm -hmm. does fall within the beer uh the pilsner style so it's just a little bit thicker a little bit sweeter Guys, have anything else? No. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for tackling the topic of Pilsners. <laughs> well, thank yes. you very much. So it was a lot of fun. Very and thanks guys <coughs> for coming down to the show today. Um, so uh, that's it for our show today. So uh, if you like the episode, click that like button. Leave us a comment on Facebook, Twitter, or on YouTube, or on Google Plus if that's your thing. You can find us on YouTube or in many podcast directories, including Beyond Pod, Miro, iTunes, and Blackberry podcast directories. That's all for this episode. Prost. Prost. Prost.